In this lesson, we're going to walk through the process of using C Sharp to upload data into an Azure Blob container. And before we get started, I just want to point out that this isn't the only way to move data into Azure Blob Store. If you don't want to do any programming and want to put data into a remote Blob Store, there are a couple of ways to go about that. The first is AZ Copy, which is kind of a command line utility that you can use to copy files with patterns and so on. This might work extremely well for you. And if, if this is what you need, then go for it. Uh, the second thing you can look into is on CodePlex. There are several projects that have pre-made code to upload data and even uploading data using blocks, which is very efficient for large volumes. The uh, reason I'm going to walk through doing this in C Sharp code is for a couple reasons. The first is to kind of understand it, to, to really understand what these utilities are doing under the covers. And the second is you might actually have a need to code this yourself. For example, if you have a, uh, a service that's running that's doing a lot of other things and, and needs to, to upload some of its results into Azure Blob Store, then you may need to uh, write this in C Sharp code. The good news is it's really not really that difficult. There's not a lot of code involved. The first thing you wanted to do is create a new project. And this is just a demo project. I'm not going to add a lot of threading uh, support and error handling to this. This is just really to look at the basic amount of code that it takes to do this. So when you get to a production application, you'll need to do probably more than this. But, uh, but the, these are the basics. So I'm going to call this uh, Azure Upload App. And I won't add it to source control or anything. And this is just a run-of-the-mill console mode application. You certainly can use other kinds of .NET applications if you want. The first thing I'm going to do is make some changes to app config because I need to tell my application where it's uploading data to and where it's uploading data from. I don't want to hard code those in my C sharp code. So I'm going to add those to the app config so they can be changed in case I need to do that. So I just pasted this in, but this is the connection string to the Azure storage account that has my blob container. And this is a fairly easy entry, just uh, gives it a name, uh, and I'm just calling it Azure storage account within my app. And then the connection string specifies the protocol, which is HTTPS in this case. So it's the data will be encrypted on transit. The account name is used to build the public URL to the storage account. And then there's an account key, which I won't show you the whole account key, but that essentially is uh, a form of a password that allows this application to write to that storage account. The second set of settings I'm going to put into app config are these. So I've got source folder and dust container. In the source folder, I'm just going to put in what my where I'm going to put the blobs that I'm uploading. So I created a folder on my C drive called local blobs and put some data into it that we'll use for testing. The destination container is kind of like a subfolder in the st storage account. So for this container, I'm going to call this demo blobs. And what I found is that you must use lowercase letters here, otherwise you may get errors. So I'm going to make this container demo blobs all lowercase. So I'll just save that. And now I can start to develop my application. But first, I need a couple of references. The first one is for the Azure references itself. So if I just search in NuGet for Azure, I'll find this Windows Azure Storage. Click Install and accept the license and that will download uh, the, the different packages I need and add them to my project. So that makes that really easy. That's fine. I made some changes to my app config. Next, I'm going to add a reference to system configuration. which I'll need that in order to read app config. I just click on that one and click OK. So now I have the references that I need to make this app work. So now within my main loop, and again, I'm going to keep this really pretty straightforward and easy. In a production application, I would probably have some threads going in here so that I could deal with the asynchronous nature of uploading things. But this application actually will work just fine. So if you just need simple, then this will do it. I'm going to resolve that configuration manager. And what this is going to do is just take those settings I just created and put them into local variables. Next, there's a little bit of wiring code to connect my application to the blob container. So I'm going to paste this in so you don't have to watch me type. But essentially, we're going to get a reference to the storage account. And again, a couple of references here that I need to resolve. Get the includes in the top of the file. Client, yep, OK. So this is going to get a reference to the blob storage 
account using that connection string, which is in the app config. Get a reference to that, and then a reference to the container, which is, again, in the app config. Now that container, when we first run this application, doesn't actually exist. So the first thing we're going to do is tell the client to go ahead and create that container if it's not there already. The second time this application would run, it would already exist, so it wouldn't create it again. But since we are writing to a new folder, we need to do that. And then we just have kind of a loop that reads through the local files and uploads into the container. So let's walk through this kind of one line at a time. The first line looks at the local folder and gets a list of all the files that are in it in a string array. And I've got to resolve a reference again. There we go. And then the next thing it does is creates a key. So a key is sort of like a file name. And I'm going to assume that within that folder over time, I could have had a duplicate file name at some point. So I'm going to add in the date and timestamp in front of the file paths, just so that if I ever get a duplicate, then they'll have different keys. And then I have a stub for a function that I haven't written yet called upload blob, which will pass in a reference to the container, the key or kind of the file name, the local file path that we're uploading. And then I have a true or false, whether I want to delete the file after it's uploaded or not. And when all that's done, so we loop through all the files, then I just have uh, some console uh, writing to say upload process is complete and collecting a key. Since we'll be running this interactively on the video, we'll collect a key. And, and a, if this was a real batch application we were running on a scheduler, then we probably would exclude the read key part of that. So let's write the upload blob function. And it looks like this. So the signature is just take the container, the key, the local file path, and then a flag whether we want to delete after or not. And then similar to getting a reference to the container, now we're going to get a reference to the file blob that we're going to write to. And this is somewhat akin to getting a file pointer to writing a file on a file system, except in this case it's a blob. Once we have that local reference, we can open the local file, get that into a stream, and then stream that file up into blob store. And just as a caveat, on, on extremely large files, we might want to do this in chunks. So you might want to expand this code a little bit, but this is the simplest way to do this. So we're going to upload that file, and then once it's uploaded, if we specified we want to delete it after we upload it, then we just go ahead and delete that from the local file system. And that's pretty much it. You can see it's not a lot of lines of code minimally to do this. Again, you might want to do more error checking. You might want to chunk large files, things like that. But uh, in the simplest case, this is how that works. So just to preview what this program runs going to do, here's my local blobs folder. And I have 21 JSON files that are here. So this is something we typically might do if we have data from a web service that we're uploading and maybe we're uh, dropping files into this folder throughout the day and we run our little C-sharp program now and then to upload these files uh, somewhere else. Or better yet, we might take the code that we just wrote and have that run on a thread within the data collection program so that we're kind of streaming files up into Azure as we go so that we don't have to you know, continually run a command line application throughout the day. And those files are going to be uploaded into this storage account. And we see that there is not currently a demo container here. If I refresh, you know, I don't, I don't have a demo container yet, so that's going to be created. So I'll go back to Visual Studio and just start this application. And we'll watch it run. And we see it's getting a reference to the container. It's uploading files. Process is incomplete. Hit a key. And let's look and see that if we refresh, we now have a demo blobs folder. It has all of our 21 files in it. And if we look on our local folder, it is now empty. So that's all there is to it. We just wrote a quick program to upload to blob storage using C Sharp. And again, if you just want to do what this program does, which is a command line upload of a folder, there's probably easier ways to do that with AZ Copy and other ways. But if you are writing a more robust and integrated solution that streams data in and out, then you probably will use code like this, and, and this is how you would do it.